Hey everybody, uh, so glad that you're here. Just so excited that you've decided to be a part of this extra special small group synthesis that we are doing as a church. Guys, this is a great uh, step that you're taking. It's a step of faith. Um, and it's a step that will help you grow in relationship to Jesus Christ, which for us is the most important thing. That you wouldn't just know about Him, but that you would know Him. And that you'd be walking with Him. There is such joy and such life that comes from knowing Jesus. In fact, that's going to be the theme that we keep going back to. That true transformation, true joy, true life comes from knowing Jesus and walking with Him. This is also going to be a great opportunity for you to connect with the family of God, for you to grow in relationship with other believers. In fact, uh, you know, in the New Testament, the Bible speaks over and over again about the fellowship, that uh, when you come to Jesus Christ, you're not just a believer, you're a belonger. You belong to the family of God. I belong to you and you belong to me. And that's pretty cool to think about. Um, you know, your heavenly family is your forever family. They're going to last forever. We, we can't all say that about our earthly families. But uh, God wants you to know that you are now a part of a community. And my hope is that you'll grow in relationship with people, that you won't just grow in depth of relationship with God, but that you will form uh, for men brotherhoods and for sisters sisterhoods, and that uh, together we will form lasting relationships, lifelong friendships, uh, I want to call them spiritual friendships that are just going to go the distance of eternity. And uh, we're excited about you having the opportunity to do that. So again, I just want to say to you, welcome to this transformed uh, small groups emphasis. So what are we going to do over the next few weeks together? That, that's the key. In fact, I, we're hoping that the next six weeks really is transformative for you. And so what are the things that we're going to do? Well, first, we're going to study together. And of course, you're doing that now. You're in small group. But I hope that you take that to another level, and perhaps at home, you're getting into God's Word. Uh, you're reading through passages of Scripture. You're going over the questions in the message notes. You're just taking time to say, God, what would you speak to me? How would you work within me? And that you're studying His Word. Uh, so we're going to study together. We're going to laugh together. Uh, again, it's all about relationships. So I hope that you begin to enjoy each other's company. We're going to eat together, and that's up to you. Uh, to what depth you go to in the eating. I hope at least you've got some snacks, some sweets, and some salties there uh, in your small group. But my goodness, uh, hopefully at some point you guys will have dinner together. You'll really uh, break bread. Uh, we're going to share together. And this is really where the rubber meets the road, is that uh, we are really being vulnerable, we're being transparent, we're being honest about what God's doing in our heart, and we're really sharing what it is that's, that's going on within us. I, I want to say, even your struggles, some of you, you may go through this and you may find, man, I'm not getting as much out of this as I had hoped, or I'm not sensing God doing what I want Him to do, or I, I just frankly am not getting anything. Whatever it is, share it. Um, it's amazing what happens when you begin to get vulnerable with each other. Even if you're struggling with something, just realize we're all in this together. Nobody here is perfect. But we're going to study together, we're going to laugh together, we're going to eat together, we're going to share together, and then ultimately as a result of all this, we're going to grow together. Now, what is our expectation? Our expectation is that as you surrender the categories of your life, or what I might call the components of your life, as you surrender each of these things to Jesus, that, well, let's just say it this way, that we're not just Sunday morning Christians. That we're not just saying, God, I'm going to give you, you know, um, uh, my Sunday mornings between, you know, 8 a.m. And, and, and 12 p.m. But, God, I want to give you every category of my life, my physical life, my work life, my mental life, my emotional life, uh, my spiritual life, all those things. You will begin to see Him make change in you like never before. Ultimately, worship is all about God. I lay down my life for you. I offer my life. In fact, if you were to define what worship is, which is one of the five purposes we live for, if you were to define what worship is, it, it's ultimately, God, I offer my life to you. And so we want to be able to say that with regard to every category of our life. Now, our desires at the end of this, you're going to be able to say, along with so many others, that, man, God is truly transforming me 
And hopefully you'll be able to say that 2024 was a year of change. And it was a year that I was able to pivot and uh, awaken to something new uh, in my life like never before. So let's begin. Week one, I want to talk to you about being transformed in your spiritual health. Transformed in your spiritual health or in your spiritual life. You've all read together, hopefully by now, from John's Gospel, chapter 15. And uh, there are just some quick observations that I want to make, and then we're going to give you time as a group to discuss. And by the way, it's the discussion where the rubber meets the road. Uh, you've already heard a teaching on the weekend on this topic. So uh, what I'm not wanting to do here is give you another half an hour. I know you're sitting there saying, thank God for that. I'm not wanting to take too much time and dive a whole lot deeper. But what we are wanting to do is maybe just to... Uh, sow some seed into the discussion so that as a group, you can really dive in together and share what's on your heart. But uh, some things from John 15 that I think we can learn. If you'd write these things down, here's the first thing. That you come near to God through His Word, not your works. Just write that down. Let me say that again. You have to come near to God through His Word, not your works. Now, this is why Jesus says in this passage, I'm the true vine. I got to say, there are a lot of false vines out there that make you feel like, boy, I'm going to get God's stamp of approval or that make you feel like I'm going to be right with him or that make you even feel spiritual. It's important that Jesus says here, I'm the true vine. And I say that because in Jesus' day, there were lots of religious people. There were lots of people, of course, that were um, uh, living for the law of God and that thought that they were serving God, and of course were going to the temple for worship regularly. But ultimately, Jesus says, um, life and uh, spiritual health isn't found in a religious system. It isn't found uh, through outward works. He says, your source of nourishment, this is the idea of the vine, your source of nourishment, your source of vitality, your source of spiritual sustainability, your life, your strength, your peace. And at North Point, we talk a lot about fruit. What is fruit? Fruit is, boy, your, your life is producing what it ought to. Um, that the fruit that comes out of your life, what he's saying is it really all comes from me. I am the true vine. So let's just distinguish between life isn't coming from religious works or just kind of going through the motions. He says, I'm the vine. In fact, notice verse 4. He makes it really clear. He says, if you abide in me and I in you, friends, that's the secret to a vital spiritual life. A healthy, growing spiritual person will spend time with Jesus, will abide or will remain, um, hearing his words reading His words, uh, meditating on His words, growing in His words. Now, just say again, the reason it's not your works, just to be overly redundant, I guess, in this, is because works can be manufactured. Um, I can do things on the outside, but it doesn't mean I've changed on the inside. I could go through the motions without any real devotion. And what Jesus kept saying over and over again is, I want your heart. And he kept saying to people, stop cleaning the outside of the cup, let's clean the inside. Stop focusing on the external, let's focus on the internal. And there is something about when you surrender yourself to receiving what Jesus has to say. Now, friends, what Jesus has to say is right here in his words. In fact, um, Jesus, I'll never forget the moment, it's in the Gospels where Jesus is walking with his disciples and this is after his resurrection and they were confused and bewildered because they didn't know, of course, that he had been resurrected yet. And as he's walking with them, it says, he began to turn with them to all of the law and the prophets, which is a reference to all of scripture. And it says, he began to explain to them all these things concerning himself. Now, what that means is, is that everything in the Law and the Prophets points to Jesus. It all points back to Him. And, and ultimately, the way that you remain in Him is by getting in His Word, letting His Word soak in, letting His Word have place in your heart. And that's really where change begins to happen. When you say, God, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. By the way, the, the definition of sin is, I'm only going to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> 
I'm going to go my way. I'm going to do what I want. But when you begin to say, God, I'm going to yield that to you. I'm going to let you begin to lead me. That's, that's, where, that's where the spiritual life begins to happen. I'll never forget a man coming to me a number of years ago, and he had set up a coffee time. Um, and uh, we met at a local Starbucks here in town, and he asked me, okay, I want to get serious about God. He says, what do I have to do? What do I have to start doing, and what do I have to give up doing? And uh, he wanted to know those external things. And uh, the advice I gave him at the time was stop worrying about that and start worrying about spending time in the presence of Jesus. Get to know him. You're going to find that as you spend time with Jesus, the things you have to do and the things maybe you shouldn't do, those things are going to work themselves out as God begins to change you organically from the inside out. Now, it leads to the second thing that I want you to write down. Abiding Christians, those who are remaining in Christ, they are focused on receiving from Christ. Abiding Christians are focused on receiving from Christ. Um, why? Because they know that, again, He's the source. He's the true vine. He says, watch this, um, verse 4, abide in me and I in you. And then he goes on with this metaphor of vine and branches and and uh, trees, he says, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You know, it is so sad to me that it, in my experience, I have seen so many religious Christians trying so hard, trying so hard to be good people, trying so hard in their own will just to, you know... Um, do everything that they think they ought to, to check the boxes, as it were, to make God proud of them. When the secret lies in, would you just start spending time in the presence of God and start saying, Jesus, I want you to speak to me. Jesus, I want you to, I want you to abide in me and I will abide in you. He goes on, he says, whoever abides in me, I in him, he will bear much fruit. And then he just clears it up. He says, you know, apart from me, you can really do nothing. Now, the question is, how do you do that? What are the steps of abiding? So let me give you these three things, and then I'm going to leave it for group discussion. Here's the first thing. How do you abide? Number one, you abide or you remain in Him when you receive God's Word. When you receive God's Word. Now, I've already spoken to that, and I don't want it to be redundant. But again, I would just say to you, don't underestimate the power of His written Word. Now, I just want you to think about God's words for a minute. If you go all the way back to the beginning, to the book of Genesis, you will see that it's God's words that created life itself. It's God's words that created the universe. And at a specific point in history, when God was revealing himself to Moses originally, uh, he began to pen the first words of written scripture or his written words. And uh, over time, through prophets and through apostles, those who had the authority to write the words of God, he began to preserve his words for us. But I just got to say to you, I have seen over and over and over again that the same creative power with which he spoke, his words that created life, those words having been preserved actually create new life in you. They actually do something in here. They actually begin to change you. So just don't ever underestimate the power of His words as you begin to dig into them because I'm telling you, you will begin to notice, wow, God is doing something in me. That's why we say, by the way, His word is alive. Uh, I think it's Hebrews that says His words are living and active. Um, well, they are, and so they'll begin to change you. Number two, write this down. You abide in Him or you remain in Him, the vine, when you listen in prayer. You know, abiding in Jesus, it's not just a practice, it's not just the practice of reading like you would read any, any book. There's an exchange that takes place when you spend time with Jesus. Now, I'll just tell you how my, what my quiet times look like in the morning when I'm spending time with God. And I want to challenge you, if you're going to grow spiritually, to do this every day. When I wake up at uh, some point of the first part of my day, uh, first thing in the morning, and by the way, I like the mornings because... Um, there's something about giving God your first. There's something about giving God the first of everything, giving Him the first of your time, giving Him the first of your money, giving Him the first of your energy. Um, so, man, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. 
Uh, that's where I want to meet God and say, God, thank you for your mercy. So I give him the first. But at some point in the morning when I wake up, I'll just throw on some worship music. And you may be so new to Christianity, you're like, I don't even know where to get worship music. And I do have to say that there are some amazing playlists North Point has put together. We can get to you, so just let us know if you need those. Um, but I, if you just went um, to Spotify or to YouTube Music or Apple Music and you just typed in like passion worship or elevation worship or you know just worship, my goodness, you're going to get thousands and thousands of songs. I mean, the beauty of modern technology. But what I do is I put on worship music. And the reason I do that is because hearing people sing about the goodness of God reminds me of the goodness of God. And it reminds me of how big he is and how glorious he is and how wonderful he is. So I just begin to, 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 to uh, be stirred up in my heart toward the things of God. And then I'll typically grab a cup of coffee because caffeine and Jesus go together. And I'll grab a cup of coffee and I will sit down and I will just begin to say, now, Lord, speak to me. And I use a Bible reading plan that we provide here at North Point for you. And I'll just begin to say, now, Lord, I love you and I praise you. I thank you. I'm worshiping him in my heart. God, just speak to me through your word now. And I just begin to read his word. And it is amazing how the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me through his preserved word, his living word. And he begins to touch on points of my life. And it's like, my goodness, God is speaking to me directly. And it's just an amazing experience. And then what I find happens is I've read a little bit and I'll notice God convicting me of some things and I'll stop and I'll begin to pray on those things. And I'll begin to ask the Lord to change my heart or I'll begin to pray about things that God's bringing to my mind, needs in my life, uh, circumstances in my life. But the point is I'm interacting with Jesus. I'm interacting with the Holy Spirit that he gave me and he's leading me in my prayer time. So. You abide when you listen in prayer. You're reading, you're praying, you're walking with God. And then number three, this is the last thing, and then we'll break up for discussion. You abide when you do His commands. You know, Scripture's very clear. We're not just to be hearers of His Word, we're to be doers. Now, you're going to find that as you abide in Him, you're, you're naturally wanting to do. I'm just going to say that. That is part of the organic life process of being born again. Jesus called it that in, in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 3. When you're born again, there is a disposition change. And you're going to find it's not so much about what you have to do or what you can't do. It's about what you want to do because the Holy Spirit is now living in here and He's leading you. And so I would just say to you, um, yield to that. Follow that direction. As you grow in sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, be responsive to that sensitivity. Um, you know, there's a great scripture that says, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But it goes on, it says, for it is God who works in us, both to will and to act according to his good pleasure. See, I'm working out what God's working in. He's working in me. So friends, listen, as you begin to abide in Jesus over the next many weeks, and I, I just encourage you, make it your goal not to skip a day. Now, if you do skip a day, don't condemn yourself. Man, if you finish the week with five days instead of seven days or four days instead of seven days, don't condemn yourself over the three. Give praise to God over the four. And just say, God, thank you for what I did do and build on your successes because that's better than you did before. But I would just say, as you spend time with God and you make it your goal that I'm going to do this every day, uh, I, I just got to say, watch and see him work. Watch and see that your life begins to naturally bear the fruit it should spiritually, but then that will begin to affect all the other components that we're gonna be talking about over the next several weeks. Guys, I said I'm not gonna take too long, I did. Hey, you know me, I love you. I pray you have a great small group discussion. God bless.